Carl Carvin now. Nice to meet you. Um, what do I do? I'm, I'm an actress and a classically trained singer. I'm a mom and I'm addicted to working out. <laughs> I've been in Winter Park for about, uh, well, since about tw 2003. I had a teacher um, who, two teachers who really loved my music abilities and would always give me solos and things like that in school. And they took me to audition for Annie um, in our hometown. It was called the Windsor Light Opera. It was the only like theater group. And so they wanted me to be Annie, but at that time there was no, there were no Annies of my shade. Um, so they cast me as the Orphan July instead, and I loved it. Ever since then, that was when I was like, I, I, if, if I could do this for a living, I would love to do that. I was 14. I don't remember being scared or anything. I remember we were like the first scene. <laughs> so the curtain, I remember being like on the, the little orphan bed they made us and the curtain rising. And I remember seeing the auditorium filled with people. So obviously fast forward to now I do theater and the minutes before I go out, I am a nervous wreck, but not like I want to go home. What am I doing? It's more like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then as soon as I, like the first word comes out, it's like, okay just tell the story. I'm drawn to expression. Like I spent a couple of years not acting or doing anything musical, but what did I do? I drew and I painted. I'm always wanting to tell somebody something in some artistic way. There's something about me that would rather like do and become these things. And I, I enjoy the dark side, believe it or not. I think my face belies that. I, I have a round, kind of smiley, and, and I am, I can portray that very well, but there's also a side that I've seen some things, things I've experienced things, um, you know, racism, sexism, and you name it. Um, so I like, I like to, to be those people in, in, in films. I like to know what's ticking underneath that. And, I like to explore characters who don't do that or have been through similar things that my character has been through. I was just an understudy for Cleopatra. That was probably one of my most proud moments um, because right here in this living room, I don't know if you can see it, I recreated the stage and practiced the heck out of that role on my own every day because I wanted to experience her. And lo and behold, one night they called me like with two hours to spare to jump in. And, you know, and I feel like my job is to, to honestly, not theatrically, but to honestly portray those things. But my goal is to constantly like, what is the truth? What's under this? What's under this? Because I hope to connect with people in that moment because they experience that too. The issue of racism, I prefer to be, to be than to speak a lot about it. I keep putting one foot in front of the other and I try to do so in love and in power, um, with patience, but also persistence. I think at every stage of my life, I've always had people who just look at me and dislike me. <laughs> so I would tell myself, okay, you, you are a strong woman. You've come through this. Keep going, Cheryl. And that's, that's something I want to remind myself of, particularly when I have a, a low day, or if I'm down or feeling powerless. No, I do have power. And when I make a mistake, I have the power to change it. Five years from now, well, I hope. I hope, um, I hope that I'm regularly in film and television projects, but I hope to be doing roles that, um, that align with who I am. And I don't have to compromise or, or have someone tell me who me, a black woman, needs to be because I'm black. I want to just be. What she's doing, what he's doing, that's great. You are where you are now for a reason and you're maybe beyond he or she or you may be behind he or she in your eyes, but it, just keep going. It's your path.